Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of VMware Explore 23 from the hub at Venetian Expo. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. This is our third day of coverage. We've been having great conversations with VMware executives, customers, partners, its ecosystem. We're going to have a great conversation now. We're going to talk about cybersecurity, one of my favorite topics. We've got Jason Rollitson here, VP and GM of Carbon Black. Jason, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you for having me. Give us a little bit of the, of the of the picture of snapshot of Carbon Black since the acquisition in yeah. 2019. What's going on? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a pretty interesting ride, I think, for the whole company. Um, uh, so look, I think the first couple of years really uh, aligned to the strategy that Pat uh, Gelsinger and Sanjay Puna were driving, intrinsic security, really building in, investing in the business, helping us grow and uh, build our development expertise uh, overseas. We built out sites in uh, in Bulgaria. We built out sites in India. It's just something that that being part of VMware has been super helpful for. Um, did a lot of work on integration into the VMware tools, so end-user computing, Horizon, work we've done in, in integrating with vSphere, um, and, and, and then kind of evolving our offerings, uh, a bit more focus on workloads, and workload security, uh, and then uh, here recently we, we kind of announced our cloud-native detection and response, so you know, it's just been a, an evolution, I think, through that period of time, and uh, you know, it's, been, it's been a ride, but a lot of fun. I mean, broadly speaking in the security, space, I mean obviously you got Microsoft doing its thing, mm -hmm. kind of, I hate to say narrow, but narrowly in Microsoft, you know, I mean there's nothing yeah, yeah. narrow about Microsoft, no. but you know what I mean, within their sort of captive base. And then, then another big theme seems to be, you know, consolidating the myriad tools yeah. that are out there. I, I, I'm inferring that in a lot of ways, you're kind of focusing on the VMware stack, and that is adding value in that sense. Uh, are you participating in that consolidation theme anyway, or is it really more integrating to things like you were talking about, vSphere yeah. and Verizon, et cetera? So look, it's a, it's a complicated story. I think the consolidation story is a big one for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, especially as the economic turn kind of changes. Uh, right. Budgets start getting pressurized, and people start saying, hey, wait a minute, do we really need to pay for this? Uh, are we getting the value out of it? We've got multiple solutions, teams, are we getting most out of all those solutions that we really need them? So I think that's a, a pressure, and I think it becomes more so uh, when economic times turn. The flip side of it is cyber is very complicated. Yeah. And, and you start finding is that there aren't, it's not like there's one single user in cyber that would use all the tools. There, there are firewall teams and networking teams. There are kind of the security operations center that's looking at uh, detection and response uh, of incidents. You have teams that are kind of managing a lot of times endpoint security that are separate. You have a cloud, all these teams, the DevSecOps teams, like these are actually five, six, seven different teams in many cases all operating from different viewpoints. So um, I think the, the nuance of that consolidation story is a question of what are you consolidating for you? The people who really try to do pure budget consolidation, you can save money, but then you start putting yourself into situations where you're not working with the right tools or you have to give up on, uh, on capabilities in some areas. So I think we've tried to be somewhere in the middle, right? We've tried to offer you know, places where you absolutely can get some consolidation. Uh, our focus at Carbon Black is on detection and response. From the endpoint, through the workload, and now more recently into the cloud native environments, and also incorporating uh, networking in uh, kind of NDR, network detection and response, uh, as part of that offering under our XDR label. So that's kind of where we've been. At the same time, we're absolutely integrated, as I said, with end user compute, as part of that whole zero trust, right? So if you're thinking about, I'm logging into an application, is the carbon black agent there? Is the system safe? Yeah, we're there and we can kind of provide that information so that that decision can be made safely. Integrating to vSphere, uh, VCDR ransomware recovery is another great example of where Carbon Black is helping to make recovery from ransomware more effective, but that's all happening kind of fully in the background, and customers don't even need to know that Carbon Black's a part of that solution. So I'd say it's a mix. Um, the industry still, I think, balanced between that, that drive for budget and consolidation and, and ease of use. At the same time, within those domains, people still want best of breed tools, like cyber's hard. It's complex, it's difficult. You need the tools that are best suited for your individual purpose. And professionals aren't really willing to trade on quality just for budget. And those fights rage on <laughs> between the, the, proprietor, or the practitioners and the, the folks upstairs. That's kind of um, a counterpoise trend when you think about consolidation versus best of breed. Yeah. When you talk to the guys who are really doing well with consolidation and you ask them, well, can you be, do both? Can you be a consolidator and best of breed? And they, of course the answer is, oh yes. Yeah. You know, uh, okay, what are they going to say? <laughs> um, what would you say to that? It's, it's got to be very difficult to be, even, even yeah. within a sector, to be 
kind of all things to all people within that yeah. sector. Let's say, for instance, I'm not I'm not worried about identity, yeah. but I'm going to try to do XDR and endpoint yeah. and bring all that together. Hard to be best of breed and a consolidated play. 100%, I mean, I think in, in the range of which some people are trying to consolidate is enormous, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. well beyond that, right? So look, yeah, our, our, our take here is Carbon Black uh, really invented endpoint detection response back in 2012. Like that was something that the, the company brought to bear. Um, and we've always been associated with that user, the, the SOC user, security operations, the incident responders, the people who are in detecting these advanced breaches, figuring out what's going on, responding and getting it resolved, right? And we started focused on endpoints, and again, that started to bleed into workloads a lot of times. Um, and so for us, the, the natural expansion, what we've always been known for is depth of telemetry. Like, look, how do we do more? How do we do more for that user? And there are two big obvious answers. One was network. So network has always been close to this, this space. Every EDR has some visibility into the network itself, but it's very light. It's just kind of this thing connects to this, this connects to this, right? So generally people are doing integration with the network, separate tool, bring the data in and, and try to make it work. It's really hard though. It's hard to connect this network connection to this specific system, this specific process, whatever it is. So we borrowed a page out of actually the NSX playbook, right? The massively distributed security, massively distributed inspection playbook and said, look, let's embed network capability in every endpoint, right? So this is something we launched back in March and it provides us network visibility from the view of the endpoint, every endpoint, every workload that's managed and we're able to see what's going on, uh, identify anomalous traffic, tie that back to the endpoint and what's going on inside of it. So really interesting innovation uh, that for our core users is like, great, that's better. That makes my job easier. It helps me track lateral movement. It helps me look at these more advanced threats, right? And then more recently, cloud native detection and response was us doing that same and extending it to modern applications environments and saying, hey, you've got to look at those environments. You've got to pay attention to Kubernetes and you've got to pay attention to containers. We can do that within a tool. And we can do that for a user that's used to using our tool. It's a very simple expansion for us and it's something they all need to step into. They want this visibility in the network and if they're dealing with modern applications, they need that visibility there. So that consolidation story for us is actually quite natural because it's just an extension expansion story and it's staying focused on a user. I think where people get a little bit more trouble is when they start bridging users. You start saying, hey, we're going to do this but we're also going to nail the DevSecOps user and we're also going to nail this one and that one and then it gets really diffuse. Right, it's very hard to deliver for that user. Uh, and so I think that's where we've tried to balance. Stay focused on one, one user, one domain. So to that end, I mean, you definitely hear people talking about the, the network and security coming together. Obviously Cisco yeah. talks about that, but yeah, yeah. You know, that's obviously <laughs> self-serving. Uh, but, but, but there is that trend. So you, you talk about NSX. H how do you see, I mean, NSX has a lot of security yeah. you know, tooling inside of it. Um, are, are, how are you bringing those together? You sort of sure. reference that. You're not inside of the NSX group, right? They're sort of separate no. group, but how do you manage that? So when I joined in uh, about two years ago, uh, we were actually combined with in, uh, the NSBU for about a year, year and a half right. uh, into something called the Networking and Advanced Security Business Group. So we did a lot of collaboration, which is really what led to this XDR work. Technically, um, we're separate. So I should say that everything we do, we don't require NSX to be present. We are using some of the code, and, and specifically some of the code that came from a company called uh, Lastline that was acquired oh, yeah. in 2020. Mm -hmm. so we kind of use some of that code, and I think we use the approach. Massively distribute how we look at networking, um, which I think is a, is a really smart way to do it. This is what NSX is. Like, I can't look at everything. If I try to put that on a device, it would be an enormous device in the data center. It just doesn't work. Yeah. But if I massively distribute it at every host, it's a manageable thing. We've just taken that further mm -hmm. and said, look, why don't we do that at the endpoint, regardless of whether it's virtualized or not. It could be a laptop, could be an EC2 workload, could be running on bare metal. We don't really care. We run everywhere. As a carbon block, we have to protect all of those systems um, in, in, in sharing an approach. Now, we do integrate with NSX, and a great example of that is if we have a workload system that we detect that there's some problem on, uh, we can actually pass a tag through for that system into NSX, which could tell NSX, hey, I've got a system, I need to shut it down, I need to segment it from the network, but I'm still going to allow admin access to go in and investigate, a remote desktop to go in and see what's going on, so, or to just change where it's, you know, what, what it's permissioning is. So there are ways we play together, but I should say we are, we're fully independent in terms of our tech. And you run everywhere because you can put your agent yep. in, anywhere? That's... Yeah, sensor runs wherever it needs to run. Again, bare metal, virtualized, now containers, wherever you're wherever your kind of most important workloads and, and the, the endpoints that, that kind of support your business run, that's, that's what we're there for. So all of this work and from an integration perspective done during the pandemic, I'm curious, what, how did the pandemic kind of catalyze 
the strategic direction of Carbon Black as the, the workforce became remote overnight and we're yeah. still, now we're in this hybrid environment. Yeah, look, I think uh, the, the, the move to home accelerated something that a lot of endpoint companies had been seeing for a while. Um, there's a lot of talk now, the zero trust talk, it's all very much about how the perimeter to the network has become very porous. It used to be, I'm inside my castle, if I'm inside the castle, I'm fine, it's build the walls and I'm fine. Right? And, and now we know that's not really true. You Queen left her castle. <laughs> well, it's a combination. A, yeah. the walls are much more porous, right. and B, yeah. a lot of times you're outside. There are yep. times like you guys, your laptop's here, there's no network here to defend you, yeah. right? The thing, the only thing that's here is what's present on your system. The endpoint has to be more standalone. Right. I think that's, that's been true for a long time, but companies may or may not have uh, realized that they didn't have as many workers who were taking systems outside the home, and all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, we had some basic protection, we needed a much more advanced capability, and I think that drove a, a lot you know, in, in the industry. Oh, look, I think we were poised in the right place because we've been pitching and driving to that you know, all, all along. How, okay. How are you using AI in, specifically in cyber? Yeah, so a couple of big places. One, I mean, look, we've been using AI and ML for a long time for detection of threats. Like That's, I think, common and expected uh, in cybersecurity. One of the more recent things we've done is actually applied machine learning to alert triage. So as you generate alerts, one of the biggest challenges you have is false positives. How do you get those kind of honed in? Well, look, we're learning from users. So as users interact with the system and say, oh, that's not real and don't investigate it, we go, oh, okay, great. We'll take that into account. And so we actually change the way alerts show up. And that's all using AI and ML to kind of make decisions about what, uh, what comes in. And look, there's a lot more that's kind of in, in investigation. I think we're we're trying not to be hasty and just jump on the chat GPT and throw out some feature that is, you know, name, cool, uh, whatever. We want to make sure what we're offering is, is kind of offering real value to the customers, and so we'll see. There's a lot of projects going on. You mentioned sort of some of the personas before and trying to service them. You look at what the cloud has done is it's created this first line of defense, um, and, and then you've got the, the, the app dev team is being asked, to your point, to shift left and secure mm -hmm. things, and it's really not their thing, but they got to, they have to do it now. You got the DevSecOps team, um, which you know always cares. You've got audit is sort of the last line of defense. So you have all these different personas, yeah. and now you've got you've got multiple clouds. So you've got multiple shared responsibility models across yeah. clouds. You've got different development environments across clouds, different security policies yeah. across clouds. So you, you end up with this. This, another mosaic and another yeah. nightmare. How do you see that playing out? Yeah. And, and I, I guess I guess VMware's strategy is to help consolidate all that with your cross-cloud strategy. Yeah, I mean, look, I think uh, as with all things, you go through this phase of innovation and experimentation and it's just the blow, it's the, the expansive, we try everything and at some point you're like, well, wait a minute, we got to figure some level of standardization, right? Some way to approach this in a more consistent fashion, right? So um, absolutely, I mean, VMware's offering a whole set of capabilities aligned around that from our side, it's kind of back to that core thought, like look, you need to be able to do detection and response for the entirety of your environment, regardless of whether it's on-prem, laptops at home, laptops in the office, workstation, you know, uh, workstations, uh, workspaces running on VMware, in the cloud, modern apps. You need to be able to do that same thing consistently across that base, and that's what we're offering from a security tool. So look, we don't really care, and they say, they say that way, we absolutely, have capabilities that align. If you're an AWS or Azure or GCP, we show you inventory, we're able to, to do some things on deployment, et cetera. Modern apps I talked about already. So we're providing the capabilities you need to do that, but you can do it consistently. Your process workflow doesn't change because you've added modern apps or a new cloud. You just have that flowing into the same console. So I think finding those opportunities become really big. Finding tools that allow you to operate across all that because the, the knee jerk reaction, especially in cyber, is something new I need a new tool. Who's got the new tool? And there's like yeah. 15, if not 20 startups going, oh yeah, you totally need this new tool. Those guys are off, you need this. Yeah. Yeah. And then you end up with too many tools and they're just, you're going from one to the next to the next and then, and then your process is complicated. You're training people, these people are turning over. It's impossible, right? So I mean, I think you have to find these opportunities to say, how can I do something in a consistent fashion as best I can across that and make this thing manageable? Right, and that's where we've been focused. Well, how, to your point about the myriad security tools that organizations have, how is Carbon Block a, 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 an accelerator or a catalyst in organizations condensing, yeah. consolidating, and getting that single pane of glass view over yeah. their key endpoints, apps, cloud? So again, I think, I think uh, you have to look at consolidation in domains. I, I don't think there will ever be one tool to rule them all, yeah. uh, thankfully for that. Um, I think they're always going to be, okay, who are the users? What does that exist and who, what can we consolidate tools for them? How can we simplify and, and, and kind of reduce the number of things they're looking at? 
Uh, and you just have to do that kind of domain by domain, and hopefully you're, you're getting to a better place. You know, in, in some sense, we're saying, hey, we can do that for the, the SOC, for detection and response, and we can make your life a lot better. We're collecting really great data. It's deep, it's detailed, it's connected, the network and the endpoint, you're getting both of those contexts, you're getting containers. Um, that's a huge step. That's better than having five tools there. And, and I think this is a problem, like any big problem, how do you solve it? You break it into small chunks. So most companies are sitting on 60, 65, some are over 100 security tools. I mean, it's not like three, it's not like 10. It is, it is an enormous amount. So if I can take that from 60 to 55 to 50, like still a pretty big reduction in yeah. complexity, especially yeah. Yeah. if I'm focused on workflow and I'm focused on outcome. So my job isn't necessarily to remove 10 tools from an environment, my job is to better achieve the outcome of detecting and responding to threats more effectively, cost effectively, time, you know, uh, all those fronts. If I can do that and I can take some tools out of the environment that help pay for myself, fantastic, easy. Right, it's cost reduction for sure. But it's the, 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 the mission immense is, is kind of where we try to stay oriented. We're not going to people and saying, you should save money on security. I hate to say it, you, you should. We try to find ways to be optimized about it, but you got to be careful, right? I think um, you never want to be the one to say, hey, we saved a lot of money. It's like, yeah, but we got breached, but we saved a lot of money. <laughs> right. Like, that maybe that trade-off wasn't quite right. Well, and, and you know, you saw when the, the tech spending contracted, yeah. you saw cyber spending held up better, and then it broke down. Yeah. And, and but then it sort of came back, yeah. and then it sort of hanging in there, but still now you got AI and people are making trade-offs. The AI's popped back up, Yeah. Um, and people are stealing. It's not like the budgets, you know, have grown. Yeah. Right, so you still see those, those macro headwinds, or yeah. is it abated a little bit as we start entering well, the, look, at the end of the year? I think there's just pressure and there are questions asked, which is why it comes back to value and what you're delivering in terms yeah. of outcomes. So I think the ultimate, if you're sitting on 60, 65 tools, some of like, I don't know that all of these are useless, but I'm pretty sure some of them are not delivering to the max. And maybe you're not returning the money we're spending on them, so you start asking questions about each of them. I think yeah. you're just, you're, there's more pressure. There's more intensity, and in freer times, in the start of the pandemic, it was like, oh my God, we got to handle this new thing, and we've never seen it before. Throw money at it, go do whatever you need to do, because we're just trying to survive through this. And now, like, wait a minute, does that do we really need a tool for cloud and for this and for that? Does that really make sense? And so you th I see, see people asking questions. I think security always holds up well in these environments because the threats don't go away. If right. anything, they get worse. The the war in Ukraine, sociopolitical stuff, they just get worse. They get more complicated. I spend a lot of time this week talking about ransomware and the extent to which ransomware is a much more sophisticated attack these days than it used to be. It's like a breach. Yeah. And they're doing double extortion, it's expensive. Like it's not just, they're, they're going to take your data and then they're going to try to encrypt you at the end. Stopping the encryption doesn't protect you from ransomware. You've already been hit by the time they get to that, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So like that doesn't stop, which is why people have to keep investing. But I think there is pressure to say, are we investing well? Right. right. Are we getting a return on it? Is it actually working? Is, is there a way that it's actually causing us problems in a personnel front because we have people leaving because they can't operate effectively or it's a really awful job? Like, so I think you have to have a more of a business conversation, mm -hmm. but uh, the need's still there, the budgets are still there, and you know, it's just maybe a, the, the diligence that, that we should have had all along, you could argue, but yeah. you know, return to normal in some ways. Yeah. That sounds good. Jason, thank you so much for coming on, yeah. describing the evolution of Carbon Block, what's new, what customers can get their hands on, and, and some of the trends that you're seeing in the security landscape. We know it's ever-changing. We're yeah. definitely going to keep our eyes on this space. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. We're, uh, we're super excited. We've been doing some great innovation. You know, it's a crazy world out there, but we, uh, we keep pushing forward, and uh, we're, we're thrilled to see what, uh, what's, up, what's up next. So. Excellent. We'll keep our eyes on, peeled. Fantastic. <laughs> for our for guests, sure. I'm for Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. VMware Explore Day 3 of our coverage continues next.